Welcome back to another episode of the Weekly Rip with your host, Coach Ricky Rickers and Coach Tut. Rick, how we doing, brother? Oh, wait, I'm, we're packing lips, dropping tips. I'm doing great. Uh, fucking starting with this. Got one. my ugly ass colored wall, shitty blinds, still rocking it. Um, Angels MVP. What do I got today? I got the Rusty Rail Brewing Reckoner Imperial Hazy IPA. You're a big IPA guy. I didn't know that. Yeah. Uh, it's, you know, parents are in the beer business. So get from them here, obviously. Um, growing up, working in it, I uh, experimented with a lot of different ones. And, you know, I wouldn't consider myself a beer snob, but definitely a uh, craft beer enthusiast. You know, like like how they're all different brewed and the difference between the more hops, like, you know, like all that stuff. Somewhat. Uh, some people come in, they ask questions. I'm like, dude, I don't know what you're talking about. Um, but, uh, you know, for the most part, yeah, I can tell you what the different tastes are between a stout, a porter, an IPA, that kind of stuff. So it should always uh, interest me, but it's like, it's a lot. And I feel like it's one of those things you just have to be around it all the time. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Same thing. Like the thing is, you ask me about wine, I don't know one thing about wine. Like, fucking, I, I have no idea. I'm starting to learn a little bit more about the whiskeys, bourbon whiskeys, scotch, stuff like that. Cause I mean, I'm mean, like, I'll do like one glass a night now. It actually helps me go to sleep and starting to feel like the better taste of things, what I like more, what sits better. Um, so it's been pretty cool to learn, but there's just so much shit. It's like anything, dude. Yeah. I mean, think about what like our field, nutrition. Nutrition's endless. Yeah. Like we learn things every week, every month, new things come out. The metabolism in and of itself is uh, its own study. You know, like you could just commit your whole life to studying the metabolism. Seriously. There's uh, I know it, there's more studies coming out now too, about uh, like the vitamins and minerals in, in each thing and in like meats and stuff. And um, I feel like, as it when they come out with new shit like that, I just my brain starts to fry and I start to overthink. So I like keep myself from just watching any of it. I won't watch that Netflix documentary. What is it? Uh, Game Changers, I think. Yeah, I won't watch it. Like I'm super interested in it, but I don't want to like overwhelm my brain with it, and I don't want to hate meat. You know. Yeah, and the other thing with it is like there's so much information out there. You have no fucking clue who the hell to listen to. Like really? you that's why you have to educate yourself and um in terms of ga- not taking everything you hear for truth. Like you'd be like, "Okay, like that's I I get where they're coming from, but I have to see, you know, I can't just take this as for what it is." Like What do you say value. to people so that's a really good thing to actually kind of hit on. So like people are trying to get into training and nutrition. They want to change their body, their, their ways. How do you pick the right person for you? You know, like if you're just going to start Googling stuff, how do people find the right way to start? Is it feel? Is there. A, like a somebody to, to look start? to somebody to follow, yeah, whether it's a trainer, nutritionist, whether you want to start reading articles to get more educated on things like there is so much stuff we can get overwhelmed. Imagine people who have no idea and are trying to learn it themselves. Like, what are, what should they do? Just find someone that they're comfortable with? Like, I think the best way to do it is through referral. If you see somebody that you think is doing things the right way, ask them where they learned their stuff from, you know, or yeah. somebody that's been doing it for a long time. Like, say you want to learn about training. Find somebody who has been training for a long time. They haven't really been injured. They look the way you want to look, or they're at the strength level there that you want to get to, and ask them questions. That's my and thing, dude. Yeah, and That's they'll refer really you to who they think is best, and then it goes from there. Same thing, like you come up in strength conditioning. You're, you know, our boss told us, "Hey, go to these guys. These guys know what the hell they're talking about." You know what I mean? And some of it is on social media. Like people give social media a bad name. Like some really good stuffs on there, but there's also some really bad stuff. You just have to be pointed in the right direction. So just ask questions like well and finding people that you want to be like like if you want to lean out and be ripped or just lose weight right you're not gonna yeah they might not they might know it but don't go to a a power lifter 
who's who's into mass gaining and stuff like that, right? If you want to supplement your nutrition to help your long distance running, don't go to a bodybuilder necessarily to do that. Yes, they're smart enough. Everyone has the general knowledge, but go with someone that can apply it to what you want. That's like life. going to your dentist and asking them for uh, joint advice. Yeah, because I bet if you went to me and another coach like at my gym for nutrition wise, right? Like, I think red meat's fucking awesome. I eat that shit three or four times a day. There's some coaches out there that say red meat's bad for you. Stay with chicken, right? So if you want to eat red meat and find a way to put on muscle while eating red meat, sweet, come to me. If you don't want to eat red meat or you want to have a lean, go to the person that will put you towards chicken. Like do your homework on it and then like reach out to someone that's going to fit your lifestyle. Yeah, and at the end of the day too, like, like you said, find somebody who is in line with your goals and then reevaluate their advice after you try it. Like if it's working, great. You know what I mean? But you have to take the necessary measures to see if it's working. Are you feeling good? Are you just getting results, but you feel like shit? Are you sleeping well? Uh, what's your blood work like? Do you see a doctor regularly and, and you know, see what your um, your blood your blood levels are and your uh, specific different nutrients, things like that? So Dude, you I took our conversation to everybody. Heart. I took our conversation last week, maybe a little too much to heart with enjoying your calories, dude. I left at like 218. I came back on the scale Monday at 229. I was like, oh, doing a demo (laughs) for kids to like show them what the in-body does. I got on. I was like, dude, someone else get on this fucking scale. Hey, fucking who cares, dude? You're moving weight now. Yeah, fuck it. Fuck it. I'm trying to do the same thing. 13% today. Body fat. 13.3. Yeah, I'm I'm like, I'm up like since I put that picture up a while ago uh i'm probably up like 10 pounds since i put it up so with Did a little you quarantine put, you put it up what you put no it was like the way back when i was like oh i measured my arms and i was like oh and i'm gonna uh, it was it was probably close like eight weeks but i'm gonna it there's too much shit going on when are you between, gonna post that one that you showed me what when are you gonna post that one that you showed me you can't you can't show all your aces right away brother you gotta you gotta have some patience how much longer we gotta wait? If you if you show yourself every fucking day, nobody ever thinks you're getting any bigger. That's true. You know. That's true. I'm not. I, fucking, told, I told I told Rue I was like Rick asked me if I was juicing. I just took it as a compliment because that means Rick said something nice that I look big. He's like, oh, I think you look way bigger. I'm like, I see you every day. You know what I'm saying? Like, so yeah. people that you see every day, you're not gonna see that body change. Caught up on your TikToks. What's that? Did you catch up on your TikToks? A little bit, a little bit. You sent me one today. Dude. Which is pretty Roll fucking it. funny. Yes! Oh, yeah! I, yeah! I can't believe it! Such good, This is such good news for me! This is a big deal! I'm so, yeah! Yes! My uncle made enchiladas for me and my brother Sam. And that video I sent to Brandon and Rurik yesterday morning. I was like, this just screams Brandon. <laughs> for some reason, when the kid's like, oh, right. I was just like, I can just picture Brandon doing that. Rurik was rolling on the ground laughing, not poking fun at anyone, just the way he's so excited. And when he does the overhead, one fist, open hand, cracked me up, dude. I could. I don't know if I've ever laughed that hard at TikTok. <laughs> I, and again, man, it's like, hey, whatever works. Like, that kid's just rolling with it, you know? He's fucking, whatever's been working for him, he's just rolling with it. And uh, he's just hopping on the train. Like, you, you can't knock him for uh, putting himself out there like that, you know? Dude, you want to know what I want to try? But I don't because I don't embarrass myself. Is that fucking two 100-pound dumbbells lunge static hold yo my man jake tura fucking called me out i was asking him a question like basically through my story and i was like hey what do you think about a split stride because a split stride is like it basically a split squat but you're strided forward and it works on range of motion like your hip flexor ankle that kind of not a 90 90 right you're more driven forward yeah like your knees over your toe your foot's flat your front foot's flat but your back leg's straight and your front say back leg locked almost like you're going into a uh like a Spider-Man. Like the- yeah, almost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So 
Um, I was like, hey, what do you think about loaded ISOs in this position? You know, because he's big on ISOs for tendon health. And I had like 45 pound kettlebells in my hand. And he just responded with, if you don't do 100 pound dumbbells for 30 seconds, uh, you're soft and your tendons are impure. And I was like, I'm pretty confident I couldn't hold that position body weight for 30 seconds. It's not as hard as you think. It's all fucking mental, bro. It's all fucking mental. Just get your fucking mind right and you'll be fine. Why is he, yell- why is he yelling at me? I said I, I, I said this today uh, to a group of people. I was like, nothing's fucking worse than somebody calling you out publicly for being lazy or for being soft. And everyone is a little lazy and a little soft at points in their life. But when you get called out, you got to fucking respond. If it's a character trait, it's a problem. Yeah, that's a great point. That's a great fucking point. If it's a character trait, it's a problem. If it's just every now and then, you know, it's everybody's human. And I heard, uh, I heard a quote. You know, who Inky Johnson, Inky Johnson, yeah, Inky Johnson is the motivational speaker. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's with the he was the arm, right? Yeah, he, yeah. What nerve damage? He can't move. Yeah, he arm. got hit. He got he, Tennessee right? serious injury. Yeah, Tennessee, I believe. Yeah, injured uh, playing football. And then he kind of just went on to be this motivational speaker. Great dude to listen to if you just need a pick me up. But um, he was talking about how basically, you know, everyone is should be judged on how their work ethic is when they're tested. Right. Can you be committed to the process of what you're doing without being emotionally attached to the results of what you're doing? Can you be committed to the process of what you're doing without being emotionally attached to the results of what you're doing? In other words, if you don't get what you thought you was going to get, will you still be the same individual? If the situation don't turn out the way you thought it would turn out, will you still be the same individual? The quote says it. You judge the character of a man not by where he stands in times of comfort and convenience. You judge the character of a man by where he stands in times of challenge. Everyone has good work ethic when it's something you want to do. You know, like if you want to do it, obviously you're going to work hard at it, but it's when the shit that you don't want to do, it's the shit that you think you might not be good at. Right. So it's not so much how you do in certain situations. It's how you respond to the situations that aren't in your favor. You know what I mean? It's like and adversity like, builds really character. Adversity it. shows true colors. Like it's like, it's along the lines of those, like working hard. It's easy to work hard for something when you like to do it. Yeah, and it made me really reflect, like, I, I need to do a better job of that. Like, I need to be more disciplined in things that I know I need to do that I really don't want to fucking do, you know? Because those little things is what add up to make you fucking be great. And Fuck that yeah, fucking got dude. me juiced up. We talked about that in our staff meeting today. We had a long staff meeting today, and one of the things was, like, it, it stems from my time with Coach Cox, right? So everything in the gym has a place. So, you know. Jay's at 20 safety's at two bars away med balls bands right so everything and what you know one of the new trainers was like because I do the Cox method man I'm usually the first one in there and if there's a band on the ground or if a rack is left out no words just a picture sent waiting for somebody to take accountability for it right somewhat passive kind of a bitch move but he's like do we always want to do that even if any little things left out you, you know if it's Utah blah, blah blah and I was like yes Yes. And he's like, we want to like call people out like that. I was like, you're not calling people out. You're challenging for the small acts of discipline that are going to make them better. I said, all of us read books, all of us read, listen to podcasts. All of us are trying to help these young athletes in here grow mentally, not only training wise. I was like, we should use those little things for us to grow too. We all want to get better. I don't want to be the same when I'm 35 as I am right now. So call me out if I leave something, because I probably looked at it or even if I forgot, I should have been more aware of it. I was like, I want that shit. I want you to tell me when I fuck up. So we do that. 100%. That's what I was saying. Like today, a couple guys on the team, like the coach called him out. You know, I think we're playing lazy. I think we're playing lazy. And then like I had a session with him afterward and I said, yo, if somebody calls you out for being lazy, you need to take that personally because you may think you're working hard, but obviously you're not because somebody else is looking at you and saying, I think he has more. I think he can give more. And that's that's what you have to look at. Like, they're challenging you, and you need to respond. You know, when you don't respond is when it becomes a character trait. And I'll tell you what, I've done a really shitty job because I'm solo the last couple weeks. Dude, can you see me? <laughs> no, but I can hear you. Do it's you see, going... like, this weird spinning circle? 
Yeah, it's, and it's showing an X through. There you go. <laughs> yeah, I got this new fucking app for recording, and uh, I guess it's Much not the greatest. Clear. I'll have to look into it. But Ashley's been away, right? And I keep no. looking at things around the house, and I'm like, uh, all right, I'm going to make sure when she gets back Thursday that everything is picked up and spotless and clean. And I'm like, wait, why am I waiting till then? Why don't I just put this shit away now when I have a couple minutes? I'm like, ah, oh, fuck. And I got a new roommate, but he's been helping out with the dishes, so it's nice. But um, I got to. Who's your roommate? Ben. Ben Tuttle. <laughs> My brother. Moving in together. Where's he at? Ben? Ben? Do you have headphones in, Ben? <laughs> he has headphones in. He probably doesn't want to listen to us. Yeah, um, yeah B-Tuck's moving in. Um, like the old days, dude. We lived together for three years. It was fucking awesome. Him, Ashley, and I have lived together. So he's just he's working remote from, from his job in Texas. So he's just staying up here for a couple months. Uh, so he'll actually help us out, you know, with some rent and stuff. Save some money. Um like the old days oh, yeah. but it's just been me and him no dog no baby no ashley for the last couple of days i miss fucking i miss emerson so much but it's uh we've just been chilling kind of like kind of like it's 2014 again yeah i i know i keep bitching about my wall color and curtains but i'm like do i really need new curtains right now like no. i live fucking with two other dudes like we don't really need i don't that's not like i'm you know, have uh, I'm not really worried about the curtains. Like throw in all nice, honesty, I'm not really nice that concerned. Every week you say this, though, you don't like your yeah. backdrop. I'm just waiting for you just to throw one thing up there. That I, it like, it really it irks me, but at the end of the day, I really could give two shits. You I know, I think it's because I have a nice ship lap here. So you're like ah, but that's because this is where Emerson's crib used to be. So this was decorated for her, but I got booted from upstairs. So yeah, you know, yeah, it's just I don't know. It's my personality. Like I'm not really going to be like, oh, my God, I have to have this specific color in my bedroom or else I'm going to go crazy. We're getting excited. We got coming up for No Windy Sleeves. We got a No Windy Sleeve Summit coming up. We have a weekend where all of the summit. That's what we're calling it, baby. It's the yearly summit. We all get together. We're going to have every member, every owner together in the same room for once. For the first time, we're going to have a nice weekend Saturday, bunch of stuff. We're going to play some games, have some drinks, do some photos, get some work done. Sunday, same thing, get a bunch of work done, um, maybe some Christmas gifts, and uh, just really get some staff Can bonding. And I'm looking Christmas forward to it. Like that again. I love giving gifts. I hate <laughs> receiving gifts. Um, I get some good staff bonding, dude. I can't, I can't wait. Uh, I think it'd be really good for us, especially with what we have releasing in January. Um, I think it's the timing couldn't be any better. Everyone's home for the holidays. It's gonna be gonna be exciting. Fuck yeah, I'm hype. Anything that's called a summit sounds sick. My goal is for each year to have it grow. We can't have more than just the owners and members now because of COVID. But, you know, next year I want it to be the full weekend. Friday staff development. Saturday bring in other coaches, talk shop. Saturday night party gathering with like ambassadors and sponsored athletes. And then Sunday kind of like a wrap up lift. Then have everyone out. Um, this you know, kind of the format that I like that I think would be really cool. Um, the COVID obviously yeah, fucking fuck hammering us down, you know? Yeah, I know. Like I mean, we... that's the, that's the name of the game though. It's just the more we can get people together and just talk and, you know, sh bounce ideas off each other, off each other. And, uh, I'm having a hard time today. Uh, you know, see what other people are doing, get ideas, how to, uh, you know, grow businesses, how to grow your own lifestyle, training, nutrition, mindset, all that kind of stuff. It just, you know, it makes for a good time. I look forward to those so much, dude. And I love them. Because, like, I think the funnest part, like we always say, like, fuck, if we don't make a fucking dollar profit, who gives a shit? Because we give some people some laughs. But, like, my fun, the most fun thing for me is when we're sitting in a room brainstorming new ideas, the next line, the next logo, what to do with the portal, like, that shit. Like, just sitting in the room and coming up with it and spitballing and then you being like, that's a fucking dumb idea. And I'm like, you're right. You know, like, I love that shit. And I hate when it ends. I hate when everyone starts to get hungry and loses their attention span. I'm like, can we keep this going? Like, this is fun shit. Like, we need yeah, I mean, four walls of whiteboards. Four walls of whiteboards. <laughs> ceilings, the floor, whiteboards everywhere. And, yeah, that's the whole 
point of trying to build something with, you know, your friends is like your work isn't really work. It's just shooting the shit, having fun and, uh, you know, trying to build something cool. What the hell? Sick. This app, thing dude. stinks. Awesome. I forget app. what it's called. Something calm. Epcom. Epcot. It's probably better anyway. Nobody wants to see my ugly mug. I think you look good. I think it's coming back. How's your Wi-Fi there? I Yo, got, I got I Covington got... coming back next week. Actually, tomorrow. I'm back. Big Cove. Big Cove. Yeah. He is big now. Holy shit. Dude. One dude. of the fastest gaining uh, athletes I've ever been around. <laughs> yeah, but my, my boys try to tell me genetics don't fucking matter. They play a role. I, I, I like to say they play a role <laughs> rather than they matter. Like, I, you know... Because when you say genetics hard. matter, can turn you know can turn people off. Just you know, they play a role. They definitely play a role. Somebody just might have a, a starting line that's a little bit farther back than others. You well, know? I mean, you also have friends that eat and drink whatever they want and walk around with a six pack. There's starting lines that you have people that diet and can never be as low body fat percentage. They're very important into a physique yeah. of a body. However, they play a role, but it shouldn't dictate your work ethic. 100 100 percent, one hundred percent agreed. One hundred percent agree. With I, I I've been I've been uh, thinking a lot. Like you Wait. only have a couple things that you can't uh, that can't be taken away from you, and one of them is your work ethic. You know, like 100%. nobody can take that away from you. How hard you work, you know. That's the other thing Inky was saying was if you have somebody who works hard versus somebody who's a hard worker. All the time, I'm like Ink. It's a big difference between a hard worker and somebody that works hard, right? Most cats are somebody that works hard. If the situation and the circumstance is what they want it to be, they're going to come out and they're going to act accordingly and they're going to give you everything they got. But a hard worker, regardless of situation, regardless of circumstance, regardless of what happened, I'm going to show up and I'm going to give everything I got to it because I'm working for something that's totally different. Somebody who works hard is going to work hard when they're asked to, right? But some, a hard worker is going to work hard regardless of the situation because they know what their end goal is. They know where they want to get to, so it doesn't matter what the situation is. They're always going to work hard because they have that end mindset. And I was like, fuck, I didn't even think of that. Like that's t- That is two totally different definitions. Fuck yeah, I love that. Real quick, we have our, we have our weekly staff meetings. There's a quick one tonight for you guys, but it's a random little shoot the shit. But I, Rick, I want you to pose the question that you asked me last night. Let's get some feedback. DK Metcalf oh, okay. on skates in a fight could beat up an NHL player. Yeah. Like, you know, you're an, yeah, NHL, sure, player. an NHL player. You're like, taking Brad Marshan, the goat, or say Patrice Bergeron. He's a little bigger versus DK Metcalf on skates. I say DK, I say Patrice Bergeron wins that 9.5 times out of 10. I, you know what? It's tough because it depends the 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 issue is how fast can DK Metcalf learn how to stand? You watched Larry Fitzgerald, who arguably one of the best receivers of all time. You watched him. I'm assuming he was on those skates for probably a half hour to an hour as he's shooting <laughs> pucks and going around. You watched that. That's very telling. Yeah, that dude, and I all kind of agree. he has to do is kind of flinch at him, and that dude loses his center of gravity. A millimeter, he's hitting the fucking ice, dude. Yeah, I think it's 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 going to be tough for somebody to just step on the ice and be able to uh, be able to just go at it. You know, yeah. like I I think I'd take a hockey player over anybody who is just first time stepping on the ice because ice skating is very underrated. Very it underrated. also goes into like who is the best? Who do you think's the best athlete out of all the sports? Right, we're gonna leave that off for next week because I got some. (laughs) All right, all right, all right, fine. All right, love you all. Thank you. Quick one, feel your body, feel your sleeves. Coach Rick, pleasure as always. Signing off. Love you.